In the previous video, I shared a high-level overview of what Git and GitHub are and how these two are different from each other. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through the process of creating your first repository, creating your first commit, and much more. Don't worry if you do not understand these terms like repositories or commits right now. I will cover everything in this video, so keep watching. Before we jump into getting our hands dirty with Git, let's do a quick overview of what Git is. So if you remember, Git helps you maintain and control different versions of your project. It also helps you collaborate with other developers, whereas GitHub is used as a hosting platform for sharing your software projects or your Git software projects with other developers. So how does exactly Git does that? So listen carefully to this. Git tracks the changes made to a certain set of files, takes snapshots of these changes at certain intervals of time and saves these as something known as a commit. You might not be able to grasp it well enough right now. Let's start working with Git first and then try to understand this better. To be able to use Git in your projects, what you need to do first is turn on Git for your project. You need to be familiar with the terminal and know about some basic terminal commands. So the very first step that you need to do is create a project. Let's assume we are building a portfolio website. I create a new empty folder called portfolio and then open the the terminal on my machine. Once the terminal is open, you need to enter into the directory of your project. So to do that, you check the path of your directory or project and use this command called cd inside of the terminal to enter into that project in the terminal. For example, the path to my project here is slash work slash portfolio. So I run the command cd work slash portfolio. To check that you have entered the directory successfully, you should be able to see the path at the beginning of your next command. Now you have your project ready and you have your project open in your terminal. To enable git in this project, the command that's used is called git init. You can think of git init as the switch to turn on git or the switch to enable git on a certain project. What git init does is create a hidden folder called .git inside of the directory that you're running it in. Folders starting with dot are actually hidden folders which you won't be able to see if you open the folder in your GUI. But if you use this command called ls minus a, you would be able to list all of the files including the hidden files and directories within a certain directory. ls is used to list the contents of the current or the present working directory that you are inside. So what this dot git folder does is first of all tell git that it needs to work its magic and powers for this project. Project. Number two saves all the required data and metadata for Git to be able to work its magics. A Git project is also called as a Git repository. Now that we have our repository ready, we are ready to make changes to it. Since this is a portfolio website, let's create a new index.html file and display hello world on the web page. Now we have made some changes. Let's see if Git has tracked these changes or not. To be able to do that, again, open your terminal window and enter into your project's directory which was work slash portfolio for me and run this command called git status. The output starts with on branch main, no commits yet and a list of the changed files. We'll learn more about branches and commits a little bit later on but for now let's take a look at these untracked files or untracked changes and tell git to track changes in these files. To do that, run this command git add and the name of your file to be able to track changes made to this file. When you run git status, you'll be able to see index.html listed in a red color. Once you have added the file and if you try to run git status again, now you'll notice that index.html is now highlighted by a green color. It indicates that git has started to track this file. So now you have made some changes, you have told git to track these changes made to that file. Now you're ready to create your first commit. To create a commit, use the command git commit minus m and in double quotes a description for that commit. 
since we are building a portfolio website, the description I'm going to be using is add home page. To check whether your commit was created or not, run this command git log. What git log does is display a history of all the commits that have been created so far. Since you've only created one commit, it will display that commit. You notice that there's a long alphanumeric string along with that commit. You can think of that string as a unique identifier for that commit. So in a matter of few minutes, we have just covered a bunch of these new commands. So before we move on to the next step, let's do a quick recap of all the commands that we have run so far. The first one is git init, which is used to initialize a git repository, which is used to enable git on a new project. The second command is git status, which basically displays the status of the changes that have been made to that particular project at the current time. The next command that he used was git add. What git add does is take those changes and tells git that you want to add these changes as a part of a commit. And in order to create a commit, you ran the command git commit along with the description. To check your list of commits, you ran git log. Now in your index.html file, create a new paragraph with some sample text. Now go back to your terminal and remember the command that we used to list the changes made to our files get status now before we add this to our commit let me introduce another command here git diff what git diff does is give you a line by line comparison of all the changes made to each and every file what git status does was give you an overview a list of files that have been changed Okay, so now let's add these changes before we create a commit from it. So notice that there are three steps involved in creating a commit. First is making the actual changes. The second is using the git add command to add these changes so that they are considered as part of your commit. And the third step is actually using the git commit command to create that commit. So why do we have this second step of adding these commits? So what git add does is lets you pick and choose the changes that you want to be part of the commit. So if you have changes made to two files, you can pick only changes made to file number one and not add the changes made to file number two as part of your commit. So when you use the command git add, it adds those changes, it adds those files to a staging area. The staging area is a hypothetical area before the commit stage. So all the changes that you add to the staging area, when you use the command git commit minus m, only the changes added to this staging area become a part of the commit. All the changes that have not been added to this staging area are not a part of this commit. This can be useful when you want to create two or more commits out of all of the changes that you have made so far. So we have added a new paragraph to our index.html file. We have viewed the diff version of the changes made. Now let's add these changes to the staging area using git add index.html. And now to finally create the commit, we run git commit minus m create a new paragraph. To check whether our commit was created or not, run git log. Now you should be able to see two commits in the history. Now before you move on to the next part of this tutorial, I will suggest you to pause here and practice creating commits a little bit more. Create at least four to five commits so that you're comfortable with the commands that I've presented so far. So that's it for this video. In the next video, we are going to learn how commits are useful, how to use commits to go back and forth in history and learn a little bit about branches.